Aside from the sporadic trailers and other various promotions, a film's poster could widely contribute to a film's traction. The art, too, warrants a discussion, and that's what we're doing today with the teaser published by Universal Pictures. Wicked is an upcoming film anticipated by many with the draw of its star power and source material. The trailer has greatly enforced audience anticipation, but I wanted to narrow the endorsements and isolate the reveal of the poster alone. On display are the two most prominent characters in the story of Wicked. Their stories are intertwined by their friendship, and that is reflected by the simple act of holding each other's hand. And from their standing, a shadow is cast, strategically forming a W, meant to represent the movie's title, as well as the prominence of the word wicked in relation to the story. This movie is guaranteed to be a spectacle, but this poster may foreshadow the more intimate moments between Elphaba and Glinda, as nothing else seems to draw the eye, except for them, of course. It reminds me of the moments when you're in public, whether it be with a relative or a significant other, commotion occurs from all around you, but your focus is primarily set on the person that you're with. As a quick side note, many people from different reaches of the internet are stating that Glinda's dress looks like folded over deli meat, and I can't unsee the interpretation, although I'm sure that the costume design will be great in spite of that observation. Metallic Cube, also known as Metallic Box, holds the spotlight of my interest. He's someone who I came across on Instagram, and I'm happy that my feed graced me with his page. Before I continue to discuss his work, however, I would like to state this disclaimer. I directly contacted Metallic Cube, and he granted me permission to display his work on my video. Proper credits will be shown on screen, and links will be provided in the description of the video. I would also like to emphasize that the art shown during this segment is solely his work. I, Oliver, had no part in the creation of his projects. With all that being said, I'd like to bring about my headspace during the dead of the night. I had messaged a bunch of artists earlier that day, but none took to my invite, which is completely understandable on their behalf. Distraught overcame me regardless, until a set of notifications finally struck my ears. One artist, and then two. And on that second interaction, Metallic Cube and I communicated for the first time. He's the type of artist that made me want to start this series. Instead of liking a post and scrolling immediately away shortly thereafter, I wanted to take more than just seconds of my time and admire the hours worth of work that went into projects like this and this. Which then made me think about a couple of questions beyond that. How did this drawing come about? What was the inspiration behind the work? Well, MC answered those questions in the near hour-long discussion we had shared together. The subject was his reactor girl. He stated that it was inspired by an art style rather than being directly inspired by another piece as the source. The particular art style reference and the artist who wields it is a discrete content creator known as EO58. He is another great artist. And from his merit, influence was spawned with many assimilating his art into the creation of their own art style. One of those individuals, of course, being Metallic Cube. What's interesting about Reactor Girl is that it started life as line work practice, but it then became a challenge to himself. A challenge that not only became ambitious as it rendered, but it also consumed 80 hours of time and effort when all was said and done. That may seem imposing to many, but that's oftentimes what it takes to have your passion translated in accordance to your vision. Aside from that, Metallic Cube hasn't even been drawing for very long. He only began taking illustrating seriously in the year 2021. From then until now, he's developed into an artist who is on track to realize his potential, which in all honesty seems limitless to me. Thank you for disclosing the story behind Reactor Girl Metallic Cube. I look forward to your future as an artist, hoping that the spotlight widens to the reach of others who feel that your art is worth more than just a few seconds of consideration. A recent story has been gaining coverage by news sites over the course of the week. It's an unexpected case that was taken up to the school board for investigation. What happened was that a teacher employed at Westwood Junior High School is alleged to have amassed art projects from his students, only to have the portraits advertised as various products on his website. The base price will set you back $118, but the cost of the prints is obviously not the only thing egregious about this whole affair. The art was never his to sell to begin with. 
and if the implications hold true, the nature of his actions will result in legal ramifications one way or another. Not only did he steal art from others, but he stole art from miners who likely trusted him. So there's a sense of betrayal on that front as well. And from what it seems, the listing on his site was a copy and paste transaction. Each individual listing even blatantly has the name of the student who likely painted the piece originally. If he truly did not have the permission to distribute the art, the case of it being uncovered by one of the students who was casually browsing the site seems plausible. Imagine going to a website run by your teacher, scrolling for a bit, and suddenly pausing to say, Hey, wait a minute. Is that my name? Is that my painting? And according to student accounts, that's actually how this was all uncovered. Not only are the students affected by all of this, but the parents of the students are outraged by the indications, taking to social media and expressing their distaste. I'm extremely disgusted uh, with this person. It is, it, it's, you know, it's unbelievable. At the time of this video being made, the story has yet to resolve itself. But if any updates occur after the fact, I will bring my coverage and awareness about the conflict at Westwood Jr. My sympathy, of course, goes out to all the families involved. The creature from the Black Lagoon, another universal property, is doing its rounds on the merchandising website known as Mondo. And the timing for this isn't by an act of a whim. The drops were made to coincide the 70th anniversary of this monster, a monster that has been terrorizing the lagoon for longer than some of us have been alive. And if you're a fan, I would definitely encourage anyone to head over there and view what sort of art is being advertised. I know that many have disavowed the Mondo culture since Justin Ishmael's resignation. Among other reasons in relation, the acquisition brought about by the Funko parent company has also left consumers hesitant to continue their support of the site. However, I still visit there to secretly discover many of the talented artists who I wouldn't come across otherwise. And from that source, I trace them back to their own socials and support them directly. There's different ways to find art than just hashtags and the explore page. All it takes is a bit of digging to get to them. Drawing contests are a great way for artists to trial their skills against fellow participants. Not only are they rewarded in some manner, but the exposure also helps to bring impressions to their body of work. Such was the case in the conclusion of the Oubliette contest that was hosted by Honeylambs. Honeylambs themselves is an artist who displays humility and love for their fanbase. This by no means is the first contest round they've hosted, and each time they have awarded multiple winners and not just one. This is because they recognize the effort that goes into the submission entries, and they feel genuinely honored by the fans who support them. Time and time again, Honeylambs has proven that they are worthy of the support, and if it hasn't already been expressed outright, I am a huge fan of their work. Congratulations to all the winners. They will be taking home a wonderful and cuddly elephant, along with a story about how it was earned. That story concludes the first episode of Art News. Please join me in the next couple of days when another installment is uploaded. More artists will be placed under the spotlight, as well as other art-related stories to accompany them in the process. If that's anything that you're at all interested in, then I would encourage you to subscribe and follow along for more Art News.